Rebecca. My age, you know I've been to a lot of doctors. <laughs> Healthcare partners, they really care. They're concerned about your health. They're all the best. I am Roberta, and I am a healthcare partner. Visit hcpnv.com to hear my story. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereseemission.com or call 702-507-4172. Tonight on News 46, a motorcycle rider is airlifted out of the dry lake bed. And Renee Morales appeals the RPC decision. A job fair is held at Nye Communities Coalition. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rhonda Van Winkle and Jason Koblenz. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, Pahrump. It's Monday, June 20, June 17th. I'm, I'm going forward in the month. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And I'm Jason Koblenz for News 46. One man was airlifted Saturday night via Mercy Air after crashing his motorcycle just outside of Pahrump. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. A two-vehicle accident occurred on the south end of town, actually across the California border near Vicki Ann and Virginia Street on Saturday night in the dry lake bed. Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue deputies and detectives arrived on scene along with Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue. The engines were staged, however, at the corner of Vicki Ann and Virginia Street as detectives and deputies went out into the dry lake bed area to find the victim of this motorcycle accident. Mercy Air landed on scene to transport the 40-year-old male to UMC Trauma Center with injuries sustained in the accident. California Highway Patrol was called on scene to investigate. However, Nye County Sheriff's deputies are assisting with that investigation. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. The proposed Morales Disposal Site Project is one item on the Nye County Commissioner's agenda tomorrow morning. But as Deanne O'Donnell reports, you may have received some information in the past few days from an anonymous source opposing the request for a conditional use permit. If you're a local resident, you probably received this large flyer which came in the mail. It has a Rolls Royce on the front of it as well as a license plate that says Luna's One. It appeals to residents here in Pahrump to go to the Nye County Commissioner's meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in the Calvada Eye regarding an appeal that Renee Morales has made about opening and operating a landfill here. The Regional Planning Commission denied the longtime resident from using the property he owns on East Simpkins Road for a landfill for construction and demolition debris. The commission commented that they denied the conditional use permit based in part because of the proximity to half-acre lots zoned village residential and concerns by desert utilities about a nearby well. Morale said the project would create 25 to 30 jobs. The site is already approved for a gravel pit. In the past, robocalls to residents' homes stated that Morales would import truckloads of toxic waste to the location. Morales denies those claims, stating that a Class 3 landfill is designed to hold construction debris, which could include concrete, asphalt, wood, metals, glass, brick, insulation, rebar, electrical wiring, and plumbing fixtures. The latest mailer, in which a person does not identify him or herself, states that they are a retired advertising executive who has lived in Prump for over 25 years. 
They say that they are afraid to identify themselves out of fear for their family receiving retribution. The mailer associates Morales with a construction company called Lunas, who had been fined last year $105,000 for improper disposal of tires in Santa Clarita, California, according to the court order from Cal Recycle. The mailer comes from an address that cannot be located on Google Maps in Las Vegas on Bransom Creek. Tomorrow morning, the Nye County Commissioners will reconsider the appeal of Morales Construction. If you would like to attend the Nye County Commissioners meeting, the public is welcome to do so. It's located at 2100 Walt Williams Drive. That's once again in the Calvada Eye at the Nye County Commissioners Chambers. It all begins at 10 a.m. Pretty much lasts almost the whole entire day. If you have any other questions, you can give your commissioners a phone call at 751-7075. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. Some other items on the County Commissioner's agenda include a proposal to construct a traffic roundabout at the intersections of Highway 372 and Blagg Road and Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard as well. The commissioners will also be making a decision to hold a hearing on a possible 1.5% sales tax increase to support public safety services within Nye County. Thank you, Jason. A job and volunteer fair was held at Nye Community's Coalition on Friday. Well, uh, we have 15 uh, employers or businesses here today, um, and uh, we have a mix between um, volunteer um, people that are looking for volunteers and also a mix between people that are actually looking for actual employees. Um, and uh, yeah, we, it's, it, we had a good turnout. Um, I'm really excited about how everything looks and how, everything, uh, how everything's been doing, yeah. Why do you guys add volunteer to the job fair? Um, because, you know, there are people that are looking just to volunteer. They aren't looking necessarily to um, actually um, be employed into anything. Um, so, um, and also, I mean, there are businesses that are looking for volunteers and they don't have them. So we included the volunteers so that, you know, they would have that opportunity as well. Because, I mean, there is job fair, but you never really hear of a volunteer fair. <laughs> and opening it up to volunteers, does that give people more experience in maybe beefing up their resume? Yes, actually it does. Um, uh, normally if you have an experience in volunteering in something, you know, it looks good on a resume. So uh, you've asked the um, job seekers to come ready for an interview because there is actual decision makers here that are at the uh, different booths that you have around here. Even if they're not ready to hire now, they might be ready to hire in the future? Um, yes, they, that is very, very true. Because um, sometimes, you know, if you go to one door once, you know, and maybe it's closed, but, you know, if you go to another door, the same door, second time, maybe it's open for you the next time. So, I mean, there are people here that are, you know, willing to interview you right on the spot, try and get you a, a job, get you in the door. Um, and sometimes, you know, you interview and it's just not that right time yet. So you just have to do it again and hope for the best. I'm looking for a dishwasher job. So you're here to apply for jobs? How's that going? Not very good. No? Why? I applied for many and only one of them took interest in my, in my position, but um, unfortunately they turned me down. Oh no. So um, are you going to keep applying around here? Uh-huh. I applied for uh, that place and for a golf resort. Nine Communities Coalition has their career connections there. You guys actually teach these kind of skills, uh, how to do an interview, how to uh, prepare a resume, and things like that. How often do you have the job fair, and how can people get in touch with you for all your services? Um, well, uh, we have the job fair once a month, um, and uh, we try and get it uh, about the second Friday. Um, depending on what is going to be coming up, we, but we try and get it on the second Friday. Um, and... Uh, for the um, for the services that uh, Nike Mies Coalition offers, how can they get in touch with you guys? Well, they can come into our office. Um, they uh, we are at the Old Man's Elementary School. Um, that's 1020 East Wilson Road, um, and uh, we they can also call us at 775-727-9970. Uh, and if you would like to offer Robert a job, you can call him 727-0670. And folks, when we come back from the break, Andrew McIntosh reports on how to avoid a certain type of infection when you are in the hospital. A medical device used to save lives may also be making people sick. Find out what this nurse discovered next in Prescription Health. 
Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. Welcome back to News 46. Getting sick or dying from something you catch while in the hospital happens more often than you may think. 1.7 million people get infections in hospitals every year and nearly 100,000 people will die from them. While hospitals have safety measures in place, they can't protect you from what they don't know is a potential threat. Andrew McIntosh shows, shows you how one nurse's discovery could save lives. This health tip is brought to you by Humana. Visit our local office in the Prump Valley Junction Shopping Center or call 775-727-0871. They can be lifesavers. This is how we're breathing for them. But these resuscitation bags, known as Ambu bags, may also be a danger. Every type of a device has its own set of risks. If contaminated, the Ambu bag can collect bacteria, which could be transmitted to the patient and contribute to the potentially deadly ventilator-associated pneumonia. But safety guidelines for using the bags are vague. The CDC recommends only that they be replaced as needed or when they're visibly soiled. Well, what may be visibly soiled doesn't necessarily mean that it's not infectious because you can't see bacteria. That prompted registered nurse Nikki Resnick to lead a study at the University of Tennessee Medical Center to help establish new safety guidelines. I followed 147 patients and um, followed them through the first seven days of their hospital stay if they were intubated and I would actually take their actual bag. They would seem clean in appearance but when we swabbed them they actually did grow up bacterial growth. Resnick says there was a 7 to 8 percent chance of contamination on the first two days of using the Ambu bag but that number jumped to nearly 30 percent by days five and six. And that's what alarmed us because a lot of people could be ventilated on, on a ventilator for you know anywhere from one to two weeks. Thanks to Resnick's discovery, the hospital now changes the filters on its bags every four days. I'm Andrew McIntosh reporting. Resnick's study along with other measures contributed to a 45 percent drop in ventilator associated pneumonia cases over the past two years at the UT Medical Center. She recently presented her findings to a national conference and hopes they will enhance safety precautions across the country. Two groups have applied for a permit to run a taxi service here in Pahrump after the failed Pahrump taxi was shut down in January. The groups are a Las Vegas company called Executive Coach and Carriage, which also plans to start up a shuttle service from Pahrump to Vegas. The second one is Integrity Taxi out of Las Vegas as well, but they say they are planning to operate out of an office on Homestead Road. Integrity Taxi say their drivers live right here in Pahrump. And on another note, a Powerball ticket sold last month at the Prim Valley Lotto Store worth $256,317 remains unclaimed. The numbers from the May 15th drawing are 2, 11, 26, 34, 41, and Powerball is 32. The ticket matched the five numbers but missed the Powerball. Winners have 180 days from the date of the drawing to claim their prize. Dr. Michael Vogel is a consultant for the Nuclear Waste Repository Office of Nye County. Dr. Vogel continues his conversation with News 46 from Friday's broadcast regarding the nuclear waste shipments being transported to the National Nuclear Security Site through Pahrump. We continue with Dr. Michael Vogel regarding nuclear waste shipments moving through Nye County. It, it's not so much a safety issue. I think we're all convinced the transportation can be done safely. And if you look at the DOE's calculations about the long-term safety of this material in their, in their facility, it looks like it can be stored safely. The real issue, Dr. Vogel believes, is... It's a classification issue, mm -hmm. and there's a disagreement about whether or not it should be low-level waste or whether it should be something other than low-level waste. The uranium-235 has a several hundred million year life, half-life, so it's going to be there for quite a while much more like what you'd envision in a repository. We asked the doctor whether he believes the closure of Yucca Mountain Repository is why these wastes are not being classified higher, and if he believes that they would be disposed of differently. I, I don't want to second guess anybody in the DOE management chain, but first of all, you could make an argument that this was high-level waste because it came from the reprocessing 